Question number one. Liverworts are classified as one of the simplest plants because it lacks two. What? That prevent desiccation of land plants. The word desiccation means the dryness. Choice number one. DNA sequencing, waterproof cuticles, stomata or air chambers. Regarding the choices, I did not mention the letters of them in order to have better chance for practicing because maybe the questions are being shuffled while you are doing the exam. So what is the answer here? The answer should be the, the stomata. Yes, sure. Because as you know, liverworts are very primitive forms of plant. They are classified as non-seedless, non-vascular plants. They are grow closer to the water, so they are not in need to have the stomata. If you go for the structure of the stomata in the land plant, we're going to find that the stomata are pores through which the water, water vapor is being escaping out of the plant. And even the carbon dioxide and oxygen are being exchanged. Question number two. What does nucleosome consist of? Nitrate and protons, phosphate and protons, DNA connected by histone, phosphate and histone. Yes, yeah, sure, it's DNA connected by histone. In order to explain it furthermore, we're going to illustrate that. DNA is a very long strand and it doesn't have any if it's being kept like, like its strength or as long as it should be or as long as it was. It will not be an enough space for the DNA to be combined. So it should be wrapped on a protein core known as histones. This is a protein at which the DNA is being wrapped in it in order to be shortened to occupy less space inside the nucleus of the cell. And this structure is known as the nucleosome. Question number three. Which of the following is not part of the axial skeleton in human? Reps, pelvis, vertebral colon, skull. Yes, sure, it's the pelvis. Why? Because as you know here, this is the axial skeleton that is made up of skull, vertebral colon, and the rib cage, and this is the breastbone or the sternum bone. This is the breastbone or its sternum. This is the axial skeleton. The appendicular skeleton is made up of the bones of the upper arm and the bones of the lower arm in addition to the, yes, pelvic girdle or the pelvis. So the pelvis is not part of the axial skeleton. It's a part of the appendicular skeleton. Question number four. Which of the following works in times of stress and emergencies? Central nervous system, somatic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system. As you know, it should be, yes, the sympathetic nervous system. Why? Because as you know, we have the autonomic nervous system that is made up of sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic increases and works during the stress while the parasympathetic works during the rest. So, the sympathetic, if you look for the action that will be uh, consequently occurred while the sympathetic actions, the pupil will be dilated, the, uh, the heart rate will be increases, the airways will be also dilated, and the bronchioles and the tubules even will have a lot of the air in order to exchange oxygen that is being needed during this action of stress. And also the sweat gland will be stimulated to excrete more sweat, and even the liver will be also increase the rate of glycogen into glucose, will convert the glycogen stored in it into glucose. Why glucose is needed? Because it will be given to the body and it will be used in the cellular respiration in order to increase energy needed to do the activities. And also the digestive system will decrease its activity which is needed for this uh, part, so it should be shut off. And also the adrenal glands will stimulate the production of adrenaline, which is known as the fight or flight hormone, okay, which is very, very important in the sympathetic action. And the uterus will be, the uterus and the vagina will be constricted, and even the urinary system and the urinary bladder will be relaxed, and it will uh, keep uh, urine in it. Uh, totally opposite, the parasympathetic. Here the pupil dilate, here the pupil constrict. 
okay the heart beat will be slowed down the airways will be constricted okay the liver will not stimulate the uh, conversion of uh, glycogen into glucose but instead will stimulate the bile secretion the blood vessel will be also constricted okay the digestive system stimulates activity uterus will be relaxed urinary system will increase the urinary output okay this is at okay rest and the sympathetic at stress okay question number five which process returns sugar back to blood excretion reabsorption filtering digestion yes sure it's reabsorption as you know we have two processes in the excretion which is ultra filtration at which all of the components of the blood will be filtrated in the glomerus the first component here this is known as the glomerus okay and after the ultra filtration all of the uh, nearly all of the blood components and here you are focusing on the glucose okay will be filtrated out of the blood but actually the sugar or the glucose should be returned back to the body but it will be returned back under a process or by a process known as selective reabsorption why it should be known as selective because not all of the filtrate will be retained back but there are a lot of very important things that should be retained back to the blood glucose is one of them so the glucose will be reabsorbed here okay 90 and 10 all of, all of the glucose should be retained back okay 90 by the sglt2 and here sglt1 those are extra information they are not in our curriculum but the most important thing that you have to know that the glucose or the sugar will be tot totally and completely reabsorbed and given back to the body okay here in the convoluted tubules question number six you examined a plant and noted that there is no vascular tissue there is no vascular tissue so you concluded that it's from bidophyta or ferns saccharophyte or cicades bryophyta mosses or conifers yes surely it's not conifers okay and yes sure yeah it's bryophyta or mosses why it's good to illustrate that all of the plants are being classified into vascular plants okay vascular this is a very big group it's most advanced but from the primitive we have the non-vascular plants okay and vascular we have non-vascular and seedless such like mosses liverwort and so on and the vascular are being classified into uh, vascular non-seed non-seeded or vascular seedless and vascular seeded plants okay the vascular non-seeded or vascular seedless plants such like ferns or the bryophyta the the vascular seeded plants they are gymno and angiosperms okay gymnosperms such like conifers angiosperms such like the flowering plants okay this is the structure at which we can classify all of the plants that that are originated okay were originated from a common ancestor which was the green algae in this case